Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, what are we doing? What are we building now? <laughs> building anything. I think so, yeah. Is that on the... Hold on, let me check. I will not be here, either. Greg's representing all of us. Greg will be mentioning all of us. For what? The night when I was wearing it, I got dedication. I got two baseball games. Yeah, I'm going to be in Puticana. Are you serious? Actually, I'm going to be in San Juan. Oh. I was gonna go to Puticana, but I'm going to San Juan. No, I'm not buying any of that. <laughs> Puticana, San Juan. Uh, Suggest it'll be there. <laughs> right, it They're gonna be our 50 seconds. It is on my calendar. I'm gonna go yeah. visit. I'm gonna see what the new flag's gonna look like. The week from um, Tuesday. Yeah. I left you a voicemail. I like the one. Uh, you did? I just wanted you to know that. We can get in. Who's not the one? That's why I said you're high. You're, you're just telling me you're getting hot? No, I, I if, if that was the case, I have no idea. I got your text. Okay, hey, I just want to Saying this is my number. If you need anything, that way you got my number. I know. Yeah, I got everyone actually, else's. I could use it here. I <laughs> Who says? Who wants it? My wife. Oh, first one. Oh. You're welcome to get that. Okay. It was all cool with it all now. Yeah, yeah, no, I got it. I probably had no idea. Yeah, because I make them. <laughs> I do. That's awesome. <laughs> the sooner the better. But I am going, are you guys going tomorrow to the EMA? No, I ain't guys got to No, it's not. Uh, what's your homeland security friend? Yeah, it's going to be there. Do we get a right away? All right. That's it. Well, no. Hey. Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Follow me in order. Everybody can rise. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Roll call, Madam Auditor. Yes, here. Present. Here. 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 Present. So you know, I'd say present before you start. Um, I was doing it. We have uh, approval of regular council meeting minutes, April 27th, 2021. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second on the floor. Discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. First reading, please.
Thank you. <clears throat> Westchester Public Library. Westchester Public Library, uh, rainy day fund, there's an additional appropriation in front of you for $50,000 to other services and <coughs> charges. The reason Westchester Public Library requests an additional appropriation for its own savings reserves to rainy day fund to replace an old and failing roof at its Hagerman branch location. This is actually turning out to be a hopefully continued uh, simple small project to get our feet wet. Um, our next project that we determined from our needs assessment that I mentioned in September is the HVAC system at our Thomas branch, which is turning into a behemoth of a job. So we can talk more about that later. But this is simply uh, the additional appropriation from our rainy day fund to replace the roof on our Hageman branch. Um, it's the $50,000, uh, the quote I included is for we're all roofing at 48488 and this gives us a little leeway in case there's any bad decking or anything that they discover, and then if we don't use it, obviously, as you know, it just gets reabsorbed into our funds and doesn't come out. Move to approve. Second. Motion a second on the floor. Further discussion? We get a roll call, Madam Auditor? Yes. 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 Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Have a good day. Great day. Take care. Thank Commissioners you. lit local income tax fund $495,775 to interfund transfer to fund the community crossing matching grants. I'll make the motion. Second. There's a motion and a second on the floor. This is, we're gonna, it's the same thing basically we did last month, move some money around. This was, uh, Scott, this is a, the special lit distribution we got, correct? That is correct. That we just got from the state. Okay. Yeah, that's what it's gonna go to, yep, absolutely. So, any motion and a second on the floor? Any further discussion? We get a roll call. Madam, auditor. Yes. 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 <coughs> yes. 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 All right. Now we got to move it again into the local roads and bridges. Highway. Local roads and bridges matching grant fund, an additional $495,775 to bituminous to fund the community crossing matching grants. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion, a second on the floor discussion. This is the other half of the million to match. Yes, sir. I'm getting close to it anyway. Um, further discussion? We had a roll call, Madam Auditor. Yes. 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 All right, we got to transfer local roads and streets. There's a transfer of fifty thousand dollars. So there's um, there's some back and forth on this. I, I think the proper you guys have a, another one in front of you. I think the proper number is um, four five four zero zero um, motor vehicles. Right. So we're it's let me get that right. We're moving it from four four two zero zero to four five four zero zero. Is that correct? Gotcha. Um, so it, it's in the capital. It's going to create another one. Um, it, it allows them to purchase this lift. So to purchase a portable vehicle lift for Hebron shop. The current lift will not pass inspection. I'll make a motion on both transfers. Second. Yep. There's a motion and a second on both transfers. The other more capital to do anyway. Got the other transfer six thousand dollars from consultants to workman's comp money needed to pay rest of workman's comp invoice. There's a motion and a second on the floor. Discussion. The, the original paperwork was just an, a line item that it couldn't be transferred out of, so they're just transferring it down into uh, a capital series that allows them to purchase other equipment. Any further discussion? All in favor of the two transfers signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
Is that it? You all done? Yeah, sure, sure. I think we're probably just getting started with you. I got a feeling. So. It's been spending some time Thanks outdoors, Richard. huh? Got some hands. <laughs> EMA. Looks like we got a grant fund. Additional $30,720.66 to other equipment. To purchase camo, camera equipment, this money will be reimbursed for the county upon completion of the grants. Make the motion. Second. Motion to second on the floor. Just tell us about that, Lance. Tell you about it. This is a uh, grant that we received from Homeland Security, and we had spec'd out a year or two ago a camera system for the uh, interior and the exterior of the facility. Um, so this is to better secure and detect, you know, if we have an intruder or we have somebody who might be uh, looking to cause harm to the agency. Um, so this will be a complete system um, and uh, it would be installed as soon as we got approval. And then Homeland Security, they said within about six weeks we'll reimburse for that money and then that money will go right back into the fund. Are those cameras monitored at 911? No, they'll, they'll be ours, but we will give the Sheriff's Department access, so if there was a problem, they would be able to bring them up, much like the schools do. You have access on your phone or something? Yeah, we, we will too, yes. Mm -hmm. so, this is, when we talked last, you said this was primarily for Andy in case he shows up, you guys it, can yeah, shut the lights off. And it's gonna be flagged and with yeah. his uh, license plate number. On <laughs> <the> phone, <so>. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, I don't blame you. But I get it. So. Further discussion? Sure. All right, we get a roll call on the additional? Yes. Yes. I would, yes. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Lance. Parks and Rec. Um, what do we got? Walter? What you got with you? He's hiding, hiding right back there. there. Come on down. <laughs> meet, board, meet the crew. Board president. <laughs> that was enough, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, parks operating fund, there's an additional $2,544.84 to other equipment. New appliances for Horton Family Educational Center at Sunset Hill Farm. Make the motion. Second. Okay. Motion a second on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion? What are appliances like? We acquired a refrigerator, microwave, and stove. Oh, it actually is appliances. Yeah. Yep. Actual appliances for renters. <laughs> yeah, same as the program center. It's the same setup we have. Any other questions? Get a roll call on the additional, please. Yes. 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 PK Conservation Grant Fund, an additional $11,460 to Landscape Botanical <clears throat> Restoration. Reason, Brinka Cross Gardens Restoration Work. This is a reimbursable grant. Those approved. Second. Motion a second on the floor. Discussion. Roll call. Yes. 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 So, Walter, this winter. So, Walter, I don't know if you guys are aware. Walter's moving on. Um, When's his last day? Not far. That's why I was gonna winter. Is this your last meeting? This will be my last meeting. Oh shit! We gotta start over and vote no on a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your last meeting. This will be it. But Walter's not going very far, are you? Nope. I'll still be here. Uh, in the community, um, just switching to a different agency, still working on recreation here in Porter County, but this time it'll be uh, helping to make inclusive recreation um, available to those in the disabled community. So pretty excited uh, to stay here and keep serving and um, you know, keep doing good work. Thank you for your service here. We wish you the best Absolutely. of luck, for sure. Glad Thank you for having around. Thank you. Um, so you're the transition to the next guy. So you'll be here next meeting too, right? So you can introduce us to the next person. Man, woman. Is it posted now? Do you want to mention that? Is the job open? Or is it not open?
So it'll be at least two months before we see a new person. Oh, yeah, we want to make sure we got the stitches there. We want to be able to do all that. Make sure we have our ducks in a row before we send our you know, ramifications. What can you get someone to do for? Walter, can you share the agency you're going to go to work for or not yet? Uh, yeah, Opportunity Enterprises. Oh, awesome. I'll be the director of their respite program. So I'll be down at Lake Eliza helping to, de to develop some new recreation facilities down Perfect. there. Perfect. That's great news. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today. See you next month if you have a request. <laughs> you might be the only one sitting up there. There'll be a couple moments. <laughs> <laughs> Promise? <laughs> Weights and measures. General fund. There's a transfer, 260 from training and education to auto, truck, and equipment supplies. Vote approved. <laughs> second. <laughs> Motion and a second to approve the transfer. You don't want nobody to see you? Usually we have it done before Eva gets up here. <laughs> what's what's the reason? I, I don't understand. Like, but why? I don't tip my windows on my truck. Good answer. He thought you were just going to be kind of rolling Cruising through town, with yeah. the spinners going, and the yeah. tinnitus. I didn't know. <laughs> All right, was there, there's a motion and a second, right? Mm -hmm. All in favor of the transfer signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign, thank you. I see him, yeah. <laughs> see Good luck. My so, uh, <laughs> coroner, fatality review grant fund. There's an um, additional in front of you for $3,640 to hourly. That includes $278.46 to FICA. The reason compensation for meeting attendance. There's also attached to it a form 144. Zero to sixty-five dollars per meeting stipend. The reason adding sixty dollars, sixty-five dollars per meeting stipend for compensation for meeting attendance for substance abuse counsel, drunk driving task force, harm reduction committee, opioid fatality review team, and TIROSC. I'll make the motion on the additional and the form one forty-four. Second. It's a motion and a second on the floor. You want to maybe go into a little more detail what, what we're doing here? Um, what I'm doing is I have one deputy that attends um, eight meetings a month with these five agencies. Um, she is in her third term of pregnancy, so I had to take her off of the payroll and the schedule because she cannot fulfill the physical part of our deputy coroner in the job description um, but she still wants to attend these meetings and so I just wanted to take the money from the grant fund that um, she brought forward with the opioid fatality meeting and use that to compensate her when she's um, on her leave okay, but so, I've got, okay go ahead oh all right the, the money's coming out of the grant from the the MOH from the uh, Health link is that where the money's yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. So it seems like the they want it all about opioid um, information. Now I'm not sure what I, I I saw the list of meetings that your deputy wants to go to for sixty five dollars a meeting, but not all of those deal with opioid. And so uh, I'm I'm trying to understand how that's going to correlate. Um. She brought this grant money to the coroner's office and we're allowed to use that as long as it, it works within the coroner's office. So she represents our office at all of these meetings. Even though it does nothing to do with opioid and the memorandum deals with opioid specific information. Correct. Okay, because I, all I want, if we're gonna allow that, I don't wanna get, because we cannot set a precedent because I go to a whole bunch of volunteer meetings, everyone, you know, because all these meetings are voluntary. No one else gets paid there. Right. But she won't be on the county payroll. She will be on, this is only the duration when she is off of the payroll for the county. Will there be another deputy coroner taking her place during that time? Um, no, she'll be doing, she can still do that. She just can't do the physical part of actually so she's still getting, the deputy coroner. So she's job. not getting paid? Correct. So that money will, that additional money will still be in the fund. It's not getting paid out anywhere. Her salary that's already budgeted for. No, it's only for this. What, as of June first, she'll be off of the county payroll as a deputy coroner. And then, are you replacing her? Yes. 
So why isn't that person doing that same job that we're going to be paying for? Because um, that person's not qualified to go to these meetings. They've never been to one of the meetings. It seems, uh, just an outsider looking in, but it seems like the next person's getting the same salary, same stuff, but having to do less work, which to me, Because that next deputy, assistant deputy, will not have to go to these meetings. We're going to be paying somebody else to do it when that's already paid in that position now is the way I'm gathering it. Am I misunderstanding? Well, according to this, it's $1,200 a month. It, a, am I reading this correctly? So is, is there other duties that, uh, that people are doing that you're going to get reimbursed $1,200 a month? No. Okay, so this is money that's just left while, on the while While our... I have other deputies that volunteer for meetings too. Mm -hmm. They don't get paid over and above their salary they already get. I'm just trying to compensate her because she will be off of the county payroll, but she still wants to attend these meetings throughout that time, the duration that she's going to be gone. Is she coming back? Yes. So when you're replacing her with somebody? I'm you're hiring somebody else to take her spot when she comes back? Are you going to yes. be laying that person off? Yes. You'll be laying that person off then when she comes back. Yes, it's all agreed. Um, if she was a deputy previous, and then um, she had to leave for medical reasons, and then she agreed to come back to replace Lucy while she's on her leave. Just temporarily? Just temporarily, yep. And when the one comes, the pregnancy comes back, the other one leaves again. And then the $65 meeting goes away? Yes. Okay, I, I still have another. Okay, so you're, we're invoicing, or you're invoicing HealthLink for $1,200 a month. Are, are you doing, are other people doing stuff to get that money too? Yeah, I, there's other agencies that are um, on this opioid fatality team. Oh, this isn't and just they, going to you for Porter County? Other agencies split other this? Ag no, they don't split it. Um, each agency that attends this meeting gets a grant. I, I'm not sure if they get $1,200 a month also, but I know the coroner's office does. And it's so it's possible that all these meetings that you go to, other people, if I'm understanding this correctly, a lot of them are getting paid as well to be there? Yes. Huh. Mm -hmm. In their own business. Okay. Any further questions on the um, additional 144? No? All right, can we get a, a roll call on the additional and the 144, <coughs> please? Oh, you're going to start with me, huh? <laughs> Which means I'm next. <laughs> yes. Inspection fund. There's a transfer of $5,000 from training and education to other equipment to cover the cost of equipment and installation for new canine cage. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, there's a request in front of you. I make the motion. Second it. There's, there's a motion and a second. We're getting somewhere now. There we go. All right. Any discussion on the transfer? Of the cost of the new canine cage. Hearing none, all in favor of the transfer signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Ford School Resource Officer funded. There's an additional $38,135 to PERF, the reason appropriation for 2019, $36,052. 2020 additional of $504 and a 2021 additional of $1,578.67 was not spent. Well, it's in front of you. I don't know. Make the motion for discussion. Second. Motion to second. Discussion. Can you uh, explain what's going on here a little bit? Yep. So in 2019, we didn't take that money out of that fund and pay the pension with it. We just used the general fund and the actual pension fund. Usually we supplement it with 
this and we, we didn't do it in 2019. And in 2020, when everyone got a raise, we didn't get the additional in that line item to coincide with the raise that came through, same thing for 20. So the total between the three years So to pay the purview, use the general fund line item. So maybe you should throw some of that back in the general fund line item. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to have to take less from the general fund. Oh, I like where we're That's the plan. So Vicki, did, did, have you seen this and does that all make sense to you? Sure that we don't do that going yeah. forward, so we're not going back to 2019 and making changes and slap yourself in the hand. Bad. Okay. There's it's your been answer. Paying it. They've been paying right. It properly. It's just that we have Different accounts. Yeah. That was that was me. Gotcha. Well, okay. <laughs> That's fair enough. I appreciate that. You in training? I'm uh, training. Training. For sure. Hopefully not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any further discussion? I think I had enough. So we get a uh, roll call on the additional. Um, yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Take care, you guys. Development and stormwater management. Got some additionals in front of you. Cumulative bridge fund, an additional $7,500 to auto truck and equipment supplies. Reason to pay for replacement of tracks for skidsters and any repairs to vehicle equipment as needed. Um, Make a motion to do all together. There's a couple other additionals. Bob makes a motion to do all three. Second. There's a second. The other additional is the stormwater fund, additional $4,000 to other supplies. The reason to purchase erosion control supplies for stormwater projects. The third additional highway engineering fund, the additional is $10,000 other supplies to purchase new traffic counter. There's your three additionals. Discussion? Cut and dry. Roll call on all three additionals. Yes. 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 All right, seeing a few. Thank you. Health department. Health department fund. There is an additional in front of you for $21,875 to salaries, $1,674 to FICA, $8,690 to medical life insurance, $2,492 PERF. Reason, prorated 2021 salary, FICA, medical, and PERF for new communications coordinator to do all communications via the website, Facebook, and other social platforms. It's like there's a wow. tr 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 transfer. <laughs> yeah, hello. Here. Transfer um, $600 from rebinding records to overtime. Need transfer to overtime because of a few employees working more than 40 hours during the week of our mass vaccination clinic in April. Then there's a Form 144 down here, which coincides with the additional of $37,500 to communications coordinator to create a new position of communications coordinator to take over the responsibilities that Kurt Ellis has provided for the health department. Good evening. The first thing I'd like to say is I spent 33 years where you are, and you look a lot better than we ever looked. <laughs> are you buttering us up? <laughs> I would never do that. Uh, the first thing is um, upon consultation with a couple of you uh, and also with the county commissioners and looking at having an opportunity to spend some time thinking about our needs this evening to change the request of a full-time employee to a part-time employee. We think we can get the job done, at least in the short term, with that. 
this is precipitated as the result of uh, the pandemic, as I'm sure you can appreciate the role of the health department through the whole pandemic has at times been difficult. Um, and one of the things we've seen as the result of that, uh, I think of it much like the sheriff's department has a public spokesperson that the media can call and get, get answers because their officers are out doing their job. It's the same thing we discovered with the health department. When we don't have a focused, targeted entry point into the health department, these people are out doing their job. They're nurses and they're sanitarians and they're administrators like Levy, um, and they're hard to get a hold of because they're doing their job, and it isn't their job to be communicating. And if there's anything we've learned during the pandemic when it comes to public health, communication, accurate communication, is so, so vital to us fulfilling our role and our responsibility to protect and preserve the public health uh, in the community. Um, we relied incredibly on Kurt Ellis through this process, but the commissioners have indicated to us that as their venues open up and the Expo Center and the, and the Memorial Opera House and the Jail Museum and whatnot, they're gonna need, his work isn't gonna go down, uh, he's gonna go up when he's doing it now. And, and they have asked us to seriously consider taking back the responsibility for the dashboard that I'm sure you all looked at during the pandemic and all the social media contact. You know that we're now getting, the vaccines are now getting down to an age of people that uh, communicate different than at least I communicate in terms of using social media and platforms and those kinds of things to get the word out about public health matters. So we'd like the opportunity to craft a, a, a public relations communication part-time position <coughs> that will go forward in communicating to the citizens of Porter County what we do and why we do it and what's available and why public health is, is so important. Um, as, I've begotten, as I've gotten as the attorney for the health department more active in the statewide public health organizations, one of the discouraging things to me has been it doesn't have a high enough priority because it doesn't talk enough about what it does. And so this is not just a local Porter County situation. In fact, uh, the state has, has acknowledged the fact that we could all do a better job and because of that, they're setting up a statewide platform that we can use uh, as our website. But we've got to have people to take care of it and post things and keep accurate records about uh, who's going where with, with all of these things. So it's our request that you give us the financial wherewithal to tackle this challenge uh, and uh, <coughs> communicate. Is this number, the 37, is that the part-time number? No, that no, was full-time. Full -time. Who did it before, before, you guys did it before Kurt got it? Who did it before? That was part of the problem, Greg. Everybody was doing it as a second job. Okay. Connie was doing it on nursing issues. Dan was doing it on, um, on sanitarian issues. Dr. Stamp was doing it as the health officer. And we're trying to bring all that meat again. Being the head of nursing at the Porter County Health Department for the last 14 months has been a job and a half. Uh, and, <laughs> and to try to do that and also be available to the media so we get accurate information out. And I don't have to tell you there's been an awful lot of inaccurate information that floats around in terms of these kinds of things. But if we have a targeted, focused operation with one person in charge, and that person is the conduit through which information passes, accurate information into the community, we're all better off from a public health. Okay, with this new portal or whatever from the state, do you know how much help there, like, is it just a matter of plugging in numbers on our end? Because, do you know how, in, how detailed is their platform gonna be to where it may not take somebody in our office every day to, to plug in numbers or do whatever? Um, first of all, this is still coming into fruition. Right. But we're getting the impression that it will be as dynamic and useful uh, 
tool as we make it, but we're going to have to make it that way. So you're talking maybe uh, somebody plugging in out numbers for an hour a day, a half hour a day. Is that's you figured any of that? There's no way knowing that? I think it? that's why we're going to make it a hourly. I, well, he's talking about the state website, though. Oh, right. And from what I'm gathering, that's more of a template. There's, I mean, you're going to have to pick pictures, your messaging, what you're putting out there. It's not just plugging in numbers. You've, you've got a, a basic website, I assume, that you can customize for Porter County. But don't we just plug in numbers? I mean, it, it, come down to the health department and watch what goes on. No, I just see the, I just see the end result. I don't know what goes into it, that's what I'm asking. So how many hours a day do you think it takes someone to, to, to update that information? Um, boy, it's really speculation on, on our part, but I would say to do everything we're thinking of and then turn around and be responsible for putting out information through social media channels and answering press releases. I, you know, we're candidly, we think we can do it with a part-time employee, but we're not sure that so part time is four. So this person's going to be working four hours a day. Specific, it takes that much time to put this. Because my my question is, could somebody since you guys were doing it before and it seemed to be, again my, I don't know, novice in, in uh, about the, the the websites and stuff. It seems like would we be better off or proposing that you just pay somebody like extra each day or whatever it is instead of hiring a part time person? Can somebody there do it? With just a little bit extra stipend to, to do the same thing, do the ta no, same task. Craig, that's not going to work because that's the, the problem now. We've got four or five people doing it. And I thought Kurt just did it. And so you have more than Kurt doing this information now? Uh, no. Actually, it was, uh, we would have Jessica gather the data from the hospitals. Then Jessica would send that information to Kurt Ellis. And then Kurt Ellis would send it to Chuck Miller. Who would put it in the map and all that stuff? Yeah. So it was three people that were kind of reporting the information. And that's just the dashboard. We've got other information, you know, the, the places and the times of testing. Well, and there's questions that come up on social media that need to be answered, you right. know, and responded to, which is. We have to monitor those things and answer them. So is this then just the position that you're just proposing is just for COVID? Because when COVID's over with? No, no, no. It's COVID that. So before COVID, you didn't get any information out there. It was it was limited. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I would, uh, from from my standpoint, uh, the information that was provided before was very spotty, and uh, if anything, it was reactive to whatever might have happened. Where I think the approach that you're talking about now is taking a much more proactive uh, attitude and not dissimilar to what we've done with other departments throughout the county, where whether it be the uh, uh, stormwater. Uh, stormwater folks or the highway folks or uh, the building department folks and just trying to get that message out. And communication today is, of course, much, much different from communication 10 or 20 years ago. And when you look at this job description, I mean, it's a, it's a hefty uh, ask. I mean, uh, written communication, press releases, media advisories, leadership messages, communications, email message, social media, which are all essential uh, without a doubt. And uh, so I, I think uh, if you look at it and if you're able to get it done uh, in a part-time status, that's a, that's a big victory. But, but it's a real specialized thing from my, from my understanding. I mean, you really have to know how to contact and how to communicate with all the different facets uh, of the public or uh, entities that might be interested in what the health department uh, It's, it's going to be a learning process, of course. You know, we're going to have to try it out and see how it works. You know, yeah, Amy, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, you know what? Uh, understanding how busy Kurt Ellis is, um, I'm just, why are you changing this to part time? Do um, you see the need for a full time now? We don't, and we I don't guess know that. because no, is this, is this, are you trying to ease ease into it or is this something maybe we should consider? Because I see the value in the. Some of it pragmatically yeah. is people telling us that we should have a part time person. 
what about a full, couldn't you use a full-time person now? We don't, we don't know that yet. I, I guess I'd much rather start out with a part-time person and realize that we need to go to a full-time person so, than the other way around. So let's go to evolve into absolutely full-time, yeah. I would depending say on the might uses, even have problems on the finding a part-time person because, yes. I mean, you're starting out at what? And this is a like $18 problem. an hour with all these skills and knowledge. Well, Doing it part-time is going to be hard to find right and now. we may learn that very, very quickly in the point of when we come back at budget time you may be talking about making the position full-time position. I would also, you all know this, but I'll mention this, this is health fund money. I mean, this is not general fund money. Is, is this something, too, that, I mean, do you guys have room downstairs, or is this someone that can do it, like, at their home or, like, remotely? That's another uh, that's issue that we have. Yes. We told the commissioners that uh, we're, we're concerned because we're on top of each other already down there. But that, that's a solvable problem. Well, that, and that might be an inviting thing for somebody that can maybe stay at home. That might be an yeah. inviting part time, part -time yeah. spot. Yeah, you're right. You know, that, that's, I guess that's where I was thinking. Depending on what their hours are. Right. Yeah. And, and then the other thing, too, I, I just have to ask this, too. It, it, so, like, let's say someone takes, would this be based on if it only took them two hours to do it, they, like up to four hours a day kind of a thing? Or how does, what were you thinking in regards to that's yeah, part time? We're still working through that. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're asking mm -hmm. for. Michelle. Okay. They're not asking for this. Okay. No. So I think they have to go part time. This is new ground. So we can sure. Just these. Just these. And we're trying to fill a void to make this us better. And we do the poor additional. And part of that better is to do some basic salaries. We have to do some hours. Okay. It's my understanding that other departments have someone already, and that's why we were finally kind of pushed that we need to find someone to do this for us, you know, with her being so overwhelmed with all his work, so that okay. leads us to come here before you. It's, uh, it's my understanding that I, I was told that it was going to be part-time, $35 an hour, and if they say five hours one day or three hours another day or, you know, they... We don't know, but we could always increase it to 35 an hour. What, I, have you guys? Like the position. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm just. What is the specific ask for tonight? That's almost a full time position. Because we're not asking for full time. Up to part time. How many? Approximately how many hours? Candidly, if we thought we could get it, we'd uh, talk in terms of full time right. job. But like I said, I'd rather go from a right. part time job. So in terms of hour, how many hours are we talking about potentially for part time? What's the most? 29 hours? 20, 28 hours, so we 28 die. hours is the most they can work as a part time. At what hourly rate? So that'd be up to, yeah, what would you guys, because you have to, that, we'd still have to do 144 on up to something. I mean, I'm sorry, I forgot my real glasses. They said cheetahs and then they're working. <laughs> that, well, they're not working. Well, you didn't charge them before you came? What kind of health department is this? <laughs> so, you guys, so there's the options in front of us. You know, I talked to. Um, we still know the option. I mean, I mean what's the option? Vicky and, and Tony. Well, they, they'll have to decide and ask us. We could do an additional. We could do this additional to salaries right now at twenty one thousand eight hundred seventy five dollars, and if we wanted to do a part time, we do the additional for salaries and FICA. We don't do medical, life, or perf. And then immediately we can then make a motion to transfer that from salaries to hourly, and then that will give you guys the, then to do the part time. Then, but the one forty four, as long as we can indicate and, and approve right now up to what for this um, communications coordinator. We would just need an amount. I mean, so that's an option to, you know, approve this, just the salary and FICA at those amounts, then turn around and do a transfer from salaries to hourly, and then approve a 144 up to for this communications coordinator. So. I mean, until I know a part-time hourly rate, I can't vote yes on it. I want to know what you guys are planning on paying. And the reason is, is because 35 was mentioned. 35 times 28 hours a week times 52 weeks is more than the full-time position would pay. That's what I. That's what I'm asking. It wasn't 35, right? Uh, my understanding is it's 32. 32 an hour? 
Is that what? Then what you at guys 28 would ask? hours a week. Up to, up to. So why not just hire a full-time person, which would be cheaper, I would assume. Well, you got your, you're including medical insurance. insurance. You're right. saving. Um, not saving that much. Like, and let you're me, working. Let me ask, let me ask a question if I could. So, sure. on the job description, it shows full-time. It's showing the 37.5. Uh, based on 35 hours per week, what does that extrapolate out to on an hourly basis? 26. Anybody follow me? $20.60 an hour. Right. So, so with the full, the original thought of a full timer would have been at a rate of $20, $20 per hour. See, like I said, we're also looking at the fact that we want to make sure that we have someone there, we have work for them. And that's why we're thinking of starting with a part time. If it turns out that it's a lot bigger than what we think, then we may have to come back and ask you for something else. Right. So, but right now, so as part of this, uh, as part of the explanation, uh, uh, where it's an, a lower hourly rate because it's full time, and since it's going to be part time, then we would need a little bit more flexibility to perhaps increase that hourly rate. Uh, if that makes sense. So I mean that does. And, and I, I mean I this makes sense to hire full time. I realize this is brand new area. I don't know what's out there. I mean, you look at that job description, and we're not talking about, uh, you know, somebody who doesn't have skills. I mean, they're going to have to have significant skills. Well, well, let me ask you this, though. Okay, you hire somebody, let's say 35 an hour, just for the heck of saying it. Mm -hmm. They work part-time. Then all of a sudden they move to full-time. They'll t be taking a pay cut that's according to our gotta, salary. And I, who would want to do that? Right, right, right. Well, you start including benefits. That's what you so, can start I mean, But I understand, but it's still going to be an hourly pay cut. Right, right. Okay, I just throw that out there so I that we're all understanding this. <laughs> I can foresee voting yes personally on the full-time position. Right now, with the information I have on the part-time, I couldn't vote for that because that doesn't make financial sense to me. You know, it's... Well, it's so how many of you are willing to vote on the full-time then? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting on my hands, by the way. <laughs> I'm just talking about me. So... All right, you guys, there's a request in front of you. There's plenty of discussion. I, I mean, I'll entertain a motion, however. I'll make a motion for $25 an hour part-time. So, there you go. I'll second that. 29 hours a week. Now let's start this ball rolling. That's we'll right. We'll work you for Come back. So. You didn't beat this horse all night. All right, Bob. So then, would your motion include the, the additional of the 21875 the, the FICA amount yeah. and then Get the 144 the up to 25. 25 an hour. Hour. There's a, there's a motion on the floor for doing an additional of the 21,875 to salaries, the 1,674 to FICA. Then the 144 will be up to $25 an hour. Right. There's a motion on the floor. Second, second. There's a second. Discussion. Let's uh, see where that goes. Let's get a roll call, Madam Auditor. Council Member Graham? Yes. Yes. Councilmember Papara. Yes. Councilmember Sims. Yes. Councilmember Rivas. Yes. Councilmember Bozer. No. And Councilmember Burton. Yes. All right. Since that passed, and I think to do it properly, we would need to do a transfer right now from um, salaries to hourly of the twenty-one thousand eight hundred seventy-five dollars. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion a second on the floor to transfer that that amount to and hourly. Like it too. And yeah. Well. Like it's good, yeah. Oh, yep. So it's just the twenty-one thousand eight hundred seventy-five from salaries to hourly and transfer. Motion and a second on the floor. Further discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Aye. So, um, makes sense, just right? Uh, is that all, you guys? Uh, Tony, Vicky, we, we good with the, the actions? Okay. So um, there's a transfer still. We have to. There's a six hundred dollar transfer. From rebinding records to overtime, need transfer to overtime because a few employees work more than 40 hours during the week of our mass vaccination clinic in April. <laughs> need action on that. I'll make a motion. Second. second. Motion and a second. Discussion. All in favor of the transfer signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose, same sign. You know, I, and, I, and, I, and I would just like to say uh, 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 terrific um, appreciation to Kurt Ellis. For the communication and the messaging he's been doing since this started uh, it, it's been a great help and also to help us identify that there's a need to effectively proactively 
communicate with the public because I've heard countless examples of appreciation from the public because they feel like they're well informed, they know what's going on. And then as we look for this, this position, it, it's going to be a tough position to fill because there's a real expertise to messaging and, and branding and making sure that, uh, you know, with all the social media involvement and so forth, uh, someone really has to be well qualified to handle all those tasks that we're asking them to do. So uh, it, uh, it's, and it's a real specialized field. It really is. So good luck in, uh, good luck in your search. Sure. Well, let us know. Let us know how it's going. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Second reading. <laughs> Thank you. Um, entertain a motion on second reading. I'll make a motion. Motion and second on the floor for second reading discussion. Roll call, please. Uh, Councilmember Jessen? Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, attorney's report, Harold got caught. Somebody called in late for a deposition, didn't show up until even later, so he apologizes for not making it. So Andy's shoe broke. What the heck? Um, all right, so we'll move on. Stormwater presentation. Director Bob Thompson and County Engineer Mike, I don't see him, Novotny. So just one of the projects has been moving forward for a while and that's on the radar. So I figured come and tell us a little bit about it. So here they are. So in the meantime, there's citizens appointment, Porter County Library Board of Trustees. You guys, we got an appointment in front of us. I'll make the motion. Second. Citizens appointment. There's a motion and a second for what? No. To appoint Kevin Pazer? No. Is that nice Got it. There's a motion and a second on the floor to uh, reappoint Kevin to, is it a four year term? Yes. Yeah. Four year term. He was the only applicant. <laughs> I don't know if he threatened everybody else and scared him away or nobody else wants the job. We get a roll call on. Are all in favor of uh, reappointing Kevin Pazer to the library board? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, There's an yeah, op opposition, opposition. <laughs> Five, two, it passed. <laughs> oh, somebody else said no. <laughs> I did, I said yes. Oh, six, one. <laughs> all right, I bought you a little time. Here six we go. Six and a half and a half, yeah. No, it was unanimous. I'm just teasing. Kevin, with all the recommendations that you receive, and all the people that appreciate the work that you do, whether it be at the museum or at the mug now, uh, uh, the county is extremely fortunate to have you in any and all capacities that you're involved with. So we appreciate it, and with all uh, uh, with all due respect, absolutely appreciate the work. Not that you until do. I see the courthouse finished. Will it must I have been his you. high school education that that really put him over the top. 
Oh, Peter is that? Brad, oh, right? yeah, he's one yeah. of your one of your students. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And then, and then, and then, Kevin, when they talk about the Calumet Trail, you know, 200 years from now, of course, you will remember what the Calumet Trail is all about, which, like you do, with all the facts about the history of Porter County. So, here we go. All right, carry on. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> and uh, Bob, thank you. Where's sure. Mike at? Uh, Mike is um, dealing Not here. with stormwater issues, and plus, I'm the project manager for this particular thing. Have so. at it. Tell us about it. All right, Calumet Trail. Um, next. As you can see, it's a gravel trail. Uh, it's on Nipsco property. It's north of the uh, South Shore Railroad and U.S. Highway 12. Uh, the county took interest in this, and back in around 2000, we had a grant to improve this, to, and it was improved to a gravel trail instead of a paved trail. There were a number of um, items that were put on this when they were building it in 2000. Uh, I'll save the dunes, ask for a number of restrictions, and it's a few agreement with uh, um, NIPSCO. It runs from Mineral Springs Road to U.S. Highway 12 or County Line on that next as you can see, it's on a utility corridor. This is a NIPSCO gas input or, or control station there. They did a major gas line improvement down there. Also, the high power tension lines that you see there are part of the national grid that is controlled by others along with NIPSCO on that. It puts in a lot of the electricity. Well, you think the Texas thing? I'm sorry? I think the Texas thing that they you know, it's kind of impressive if you actually look at this national. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> I know. But um, next. <laughs> you can also see it's a part of a transportation corridor with the um, this is broken the sign. This is the Lumet sure. Trail. The Lumet Trail. Yes. Where's the kind of we haven't paid for the rest of the sign. That's what right. we're getting to. Right. <laughs> is it going to stay gravel, or is there talk about paving it? I'm getting to that. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> um, next. The Calumet Trail, it's 9.1 miles. As I mentioned, it's on Nipsco property. Tower transmission is part of the national grid. Underground pipelines, which delayed the actual construction we had going in about 2016. I pulled it off the list because of the pipeline that was going to be going in. I refused to build a construction road for Nipsco. Um, Use of the trail requires us to be in an agreement with NIPSCO now um, to use it. I mean, NIPSCO has been generous hosts in allowing us to use it, but there's a lot of stipulations on this. NIPSCO can close the trail for maintenance or it can close the trail permanently with 30-day notice to this. Uh, if NIPSCO damages the trail during one of their routine maintenance or if they do a pipeline and everything on that, they don't have to replace the trail that they damaged. We have to replace it. That's within the agreement. Agreement has specific guidelines for the construction of the trail. If we were to do it paved, we can only go one foot above the existing grade on that, and there is quite a bit of um, wetlands in that. Next. Okay, so with that agreement, one of the things that came up with that, the DNR, some people were looking at next level trails, the DNR, received the agreement and wrote an email back saying they would have they have a lot of concerns with that agreement that we have with NIPSCO. And the fact is, is if they granted us money on that and NIPSCO did close that trail permanently, we would have to pay back all of that grant money. I also went back and we have $4 million almost with uh, construction funding right now through um, Federal Highway in NDOT. I asked NDOT the same question on that and they said yes we would have to pay it back if NIPSCO closes that trail so knowing that I wanted to get as much of that trail off of the NIPSCO property as possible uh, NIPSCO after they heard me say that wanted to approach approached me and said we need to sit down and talk I haven't talked with them yet but I wanted to get an experience with the National Park and the Indiana Dunes National Park so Myself and Mike Novotny went up and spoke with um, Paul Labovitz and um, his staff up there about this next. And we came up with a concept plan on how to get this off of the NIPSCO property and uh, get a national park experience for the uh, citizens or the pedestrians that are going to be using this trail. 
get into a little more detail here shortly. So next. One of the things is going to be actually using National Park property on this. This is Furnaceville Road. This, is, this road is, for the most part, National Park property. There's only a small section that's county in that, and it's around the cemetery and the schoolhouse shop oh. that's up there. Mm -hmm. On that, the rest of it is National Park along with Kemmel Road on that because it was part of a land swap that the commissioners did back in the uh, 90s to get additional land for parking with the NICTI station. So here we're looking at Furnaceville Road and how we can, um, instead of seeing a utility corridor, we can actually see the beautiful dunes and mm -hmm. the uh, wooded areas along this. Next. Is this a heavy traveled road? No, um, not at all. Uh, other parts we're going to be going into, this is a closed section of uh, Beverly Drive and Beverly Shores. It's between Kemmel and Broadway. What we want to do is rehabilitate this section at Beverly Shores. We're also in talks with them. They will keep it closed in this section that they have it now. We have to replace a, um, there was a uh, culvert that blew out, so we're going to have to replace a section of that for drainage purposes, but rehabilitate this road and just keep it closed and for uh, pedestrian use only on that. So here again, on each side of the road is um, National Park. So it's <coughs> really a beautiful road to go down and birding and uh, wildlife in this area. Next. So getting into the next part of this, phase one, as you see on this, we have $1.6 million of federal funding from um, through NDOT with Federal Highway on that. $400,000 match for the construction on that is coming from the RDA as part of the Town of Porter project from way back. We keep checking, it's still there for us. So that part is taken care of. <coughs> that is gonna be under construction in 20, next year, fiscal year 2023 of NDOT, which starts July 1st of 2022. So sometime after July 1st of 2022, we will be letting this and starting construction on this phase. This section does stay on the NIPSCO property um, because of the letting time that we have on that. We paid for the, con the engineering design on this totally with local funds. It, what it does is it starts at Mineral Springs Road and it'll go up to the Doom Park train station. At the Doom Park train station and underneath State Road 49, the NICTI double track project is going to be paving that area. They're going to be putting a barrier and a fence in there to separate the trains from the pedestrians when it goes underneath the 49 bridge. We will go, they are also building the new um, connection there that they have that goes across the tracks by the platforms that will connect to the trail and take it into the parking lot. That also connects into the, the Dunes Kankakee Trail that goes over to 49 Bridge and also the trail that goes into the state park. All right, so phase two then will then start at the um, Dunes station there and the intent is to run along State Road 2. I'll get back to that in a second. Next. Um, as you can see, we're running along Furnaceville Road. This is in existing infrastructure that we're going to be using. We're also going to be using Kemmel Road going up north. Again, that's National Park Road on that. From there, um, we're going to take a jog. And where you see the red line there is old Beverly Shores Road. It's concrete in there, overgrown in that section, but rehabilitate that. Again, National Park property up to Beverly Drive. And Beverly Drive is the right of way within <clears throat> Beverly Shores, and it is um, that's the section you see there that's curved and it is closed. Next. Um, what you see in yellow there is phase three. Currently, we have an engineer design contract that just got led recently by the commissioners on that section there to come back and use the existing Calumet Trail. Now, I know it says phase two up there, but really that's going to be part of phase three, what you're seeing right there. So we're hoping to get all the way over to Kemmel Road with phase three and what we have with the engineering contract now. So, Christy, can you go back? 
go back one more. So that section where you see with phase two right there, we're going to be going on national park property, um, taking it out of the Doom Park train station, going on the north side of 12, building a new trail, getting to the Tremont rest area that's under national park property, and then hopefully crossing US 12 with what we call a Hawk system, which is a pedestrian stoplight basically. And then continuing on along a national park property to the uh, on the south side of US 12 to Furnaceville Road. So that section is gonna be brand new trail. Then from, and then continue on forward. Christy, please. Here we're gonna pick up using existing infrastructure. Central Avenue um, is under national park. Here again, that road is totally national park. That's very popular, I guess, with birders and the reason why National Park had that. When we went up there and talked with them about this, and I told them I wanted to get off Nipsco property, they just kind of looked at me and said, yeah, is this guy for real? And then I held out a map with a bunch of markers, and it's like, all right, guys, go for it. So basically what you're seeing, the concept here, has really been worked out with National Park staff on this. So um, that's the concept plan. Next slide, please. The green area here is alternative that we looked at. And again, National Park staff really like this one going up to, and it takes the pedestrians up by the lake and they can see the beaches and also the uh, future houses from the World's Fair that are along the route there too. So that is something that we are gonna consider as possible the future um, improvement on that. And we have other ideals for spurs going down Broadway to get to uh, the campground with the National Park and other items on that too. But the main items that you're seeing right here, phase one, phase two, and phase three that we really wanna get done here. Next. So there is your presentation. It, it is, by what you had said, it sounded like the National Parks would prefer us to be on their property than Nipsco property, is that, do you say this right or no? I would prefer to be on National Park than Nipsco property. But, why, but when you said- Why do you want to take the chance of paying back millions of oh, dollars? Oh, I'm with you all the way. I just didn't know how they felt about it. You know, like- They absolutely love the ideal because of the fact that, you know, we're gonna send pedestrians down a utility corridor to look at power lines. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, here we can actually give them a national, you know- right. an experience. Uh, an experience. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And this uh, alternative route to take you down by the beach. Yep. And, uh, <clears throat> sounds cool. So yeah. Is all the upkeep done by the county, or does the uh, park service have some upkeep in it, or? There currently is a maintenance agreement that's going by that is with the state park, the national park, and the county. And it really does deals with mowing on that and a few things. I mean. The the National Park provides ranger service for it and uh, on the trail of, and they'll look over it. So I, that is something that we're going to have to continue on working on. Would, would that be with our parks department then <coughs> getting involved in that? I Not don't sure. know. Okay. You know a park guy right there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I that just, yeah. is, I mean, it, that's all. You guys are mowing it now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, they are the involved. Yeah. Might. I mean, maybe he'll get the park system to do it. Yeah, I mean, but they're, within that agreement, they can only mow it twice. The parks, our parks? Yeah. Oh. So it's, and at times I think it needs oh, mowing stats. quite a bit more than twice in a year. And mowing our lawn twice a week. Yeah. Because you have to plow it in the winter or no? Uh, no, we talked about that and everything like that. And for recreational purposes, why plow it? I mean, there's people that want to cross country ski, snowshoe. I mean, there's all different types of um, activities that, that can go on with the snow. So, I mean, that, that, that was something the National Park asked for, wished. So, I mean, it, details on that we're going to be continuing on mm -hmm. and discussing. This is cool you're doing it. So uh, phase one, it sounds like it's paid for. Yes. Phase three, engineering is, it's, it's I, I guess I'm asking, where's our responsibility lie as a county in terms of 
completion of this three phase project? With the recent appropriation that we had within the trails fund, we changed over the Dunes Kankakee trail fund over to the just simply trail fund. We do have a little funding in there that we'll be putting towards the engineering. Uh, we recently had only $200,000 of federal funding to match the engineering for the very eastern phase that we just recently contracted with. Um, since then, within discussions with NERPC, we are going to be receiving probably close to $590,000 worth of funding for this engineering on that. So there's probably going to be a local match of about $160,000 with engineering on that. What's the uh, cost per mile to do this? Is it pretty expensive? What, stretching it out, and here again, we're going to have to get into conversations with Beverly Shores because we're going to be using their roads on that or requesting to use their roads as far as a um, shared type system everything like that. So I, there's a lot of discussion still yet to go. I mean, if we're building a brand new trail um, in certain areas, I've heard estimates of $500,000 on up to $900,000 per mile. So in that area along US 12, yeah, we could be looking at those costs because it's a brand new trail. Hence why I'm really trying to use existing infrastructure on this. The fact that we have a base from the, the western part's going to be expensive. The soils are terrible there, and it's wetlands. Okay? So we know that. So are we know. going to be able to build on that, though? Yeah, we do. We, we've had geotechnical engineers out. We know there's going to be quite a bit of excavation of bad material out there, but we're going to have to put good material back in for it. So, yes, um, one of the things we're also talking about doing, if we can, and that's uh, cement stabilization of two of the soils, which will help immensely. So there's quite a bit of engineering still we're looking at to do on that section to kind of uh, deal with the bad soils. So they ask, would you say 147,000 for would be the matching ask for the phase three engineering? Yes. And then what about the, the construction? The construction costs, um, we have $1.4 million for the construction of the eastern part. And if all goes well and we're able to do the shared infrastructure, shared roadways and everything like that, we think we can get the camel on that. So the match on that is probably going to be in the area of um, what was it? What do I want to say about five hundred thousand dollars for the construction? So right now you're so to finish phase two. Just I'm going just some numbers. One hundred forty-seven for engineering match and five hundred thousand right. dollars match that, to get the construction of phase two. The engineering is going to be going on. The construction for the eastern part, phase three, Beverly Road and stuff like that, Sorry. doesn't come out until 2024. Or, um, or I should say, INDOT's fiscal year 2024, which really starts July 1st of 2023. That's confusing. I know it is. <laughs> And then you jump in and the federal government, their fiscal year starts October 1st. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just trying to, you know, look at the, the numbers. I mean, so phase two, though, I mean, that's, so we're doing phase one, phase two, then phase three in the middle to finish it all? Well, I was calling phase two in the middle, but all right. Yeah. Uh, the middle section, to do that, right now we don't have any federal funding for it. I tried to apply for um, some funding through the congressional office here, uh, but I haven't had word, I don't know. Um, where is next level trails that's opening up in um, November of this year? Now with next level trails, they will provide funding for construction, but they won't 
provide funding for the engineering. However, the funding you put in towards engineering can be used as a match towards your construction. So we have, so we don't have any funding for, I guess, phase two is in the middle, right? Was Correct. I misrepresenting. Phase three is the e the eastern portion. Correct. All right. Can we have a match for that though, phase three? We have money for that. For the eastern. The very eastern Con section, we will need the match for the construction and also some match for the engineering. chasing the phase two federal money. Yeah. All right. Any, any other questions? I, I think, Bob, it looks, there's been a lot of time and effort put in this over uh, over a long period of time. Uh, and it sounds as if you got a real solid plan uh, that, uh, that I think we can move forward with. I mean, I, I, to talk about the effect that that'll have on the northern part of the county is tremendous and for anybody who's been on the trail system up north and, and you can go from uh, uh, Chesterton down to uh, Crown Point all on paved path if we can somehow uh, get involved with I mean and that's one of the greatest secrets that we've got uh, around so I think to expand on that and to make it bigger and better uh, and uh, provide that missing link is uh, a game changer and it really is, and that the uh, ultimately, I mean, the, the ideal ideal uh, thought would be that uh, at some point to bring folks from the south, give them an opportunity to get north, to get to the uh, you know to get to the path, um, and that's an even bigger deal yet, which there's probably been some thought or discussions or dreams about, uh, but but in terms of. Uh, uh, unbelievable opportunity for the entire county. Right. Uh, I mean, that's just uh, unbelievable. Long time coming. Uh, yeah. So I, I uh, certainly look forward to this, and then look at look forward to uh, the next chapter too, uh, because I think that's that's when it really makes a significant impact. Any other questions? Thank you for presenting. Sure. So I'm sure we'll see you in the near future. I don't know, working out with the commissioners for some yeah, of the- I'm working with the commissioners on this, so. Some of the money. Mm -hmm. So, all right, thank you. All right, thank sure. you. Anybody else got any questions? Um, I don't, um, we were gonna meet, uh, Scott left. I know Harold's been talking to Scott about, I think the foundation was scheduled to meet. Uh, maybe like the, when was it? it was the first. The first? The June 1st? Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's still in play. And I know that they want to have an executive session to deal with a couple things, a couple uh, lawsuits. So they're trying to schedule that. I think they're going to try to um, put those dates together. So I'm not, I'm not certain. So you guys pay attention. I, I think we had scheduled the foundation meeting the last time we met for June 1st, for whatever reason, you know, instead of putting it with the regular meeting. So, but I, Wait, no, what? we got a meeting June 1st? Yeah, foundation. Foundation, I think we scheduled it um, for June 1st. I'm not sure the exact reasons. I don't remember, maybe Amanda couldn't make a meeting or something at the end of the month. I don't know if it had to do with the legislation. So, but I know uh, Harold and Scott are working on if, an executive session also to go over a few. Um, lawsuits are out there, so we'll try to. We'll get clarification get that. on that immediately. Okay, yeah, I won't be there, just a heads up. I have a baseball game that evening, so. Manage the team. Gotta be there. Skip it tonight. All right, I can't imagine the record of that team when you're done with it. We're so. one, hey, it's tied one to one right now. All right, is anything else? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion. There's a motion on the floor. Second. Second, absolutely. <laughs> Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. Laura. Oh.
you'll have to ask her 